we've got two really ongoing big challenges around personalization in social care and that's uh, those are two cultural shifts they're really shifts in power and they're about working with people as active citizens so it's moving from a, a in a sense that we work with people who are passive and need our support to actually engaging with them as people who are their own expert who have got uh, resources and capacities and skills that need to be built on and deployed. So it's working with people as active citizens, that's about breaking a mould, it's breaking a way in which professionals have understood their, their job um, to doing things to people, to doing things with people. So that's the first. The second big shift is to understand that actually people, whether they have health or social care needs, live their lives in communities, and um, it's about working with um, active citizens as part of active communities. So it's a shift from understanding that our job is just to provide people with services, to thinking about how we keep people connected, how we use the networks that they're a part of, or could be a part of, to actually promote their well-being, their sense of how they feel about themselves, reduce their isolation, and give them a real sense that they can be in control of what it is that um, they uh, need in order to live their life. In, in tackling the challenges, I think that we are, we're on a journey. I think that we're realising that we have to be really um, clear with people about um, the resource that's going to be made available to them. So there's no point giving people a sense that you can take charge of something unless you're really clear about this is the amount of resource you've got, this is how you can use the resource, and that you tie that to some very good support. So one of the ways this is happening, and I think happening well, is where we um, allow others to take on the jobs that we've done. So in terms of support planning, helping people make sense of how they're going to use the resource they've got, best done not by us as professionals or by the state, but by community resources, by people who have had similar experiences, have had a disabled child themselves or have a long-term condition, who actually work through some of the solutions, some, some of the answers. And it's then about um, being prepared to innovate and really focusing on the outcome. So we best when we um, continue to ask, is it making a difference, rather than how are you spending your money, what are you spending it upon? So the challenge for us is, if it's legal, um, it has to be legal, but is, if, if, as long as it delivers outcomes, that's the conversation we should be having with people. The lessons I think that we can, that we're still learning, um, that the NHS can uh, take account of are some very basic ones. It, it is about having good information available to people. It's about giving people time to think through, time to plan. So tr trying to uh, help people plan in a way that doesn't um, deal with, it's dealt with the crisis and it gives them a chance to then plan in a, in a context of some, uh, some, some opportunity to get a grip of their life. So, it's there's something about when you do it. Um, I think there's something about, um, as I've said, how you use others to help people support plan. And then it's about um, working with some of the resources that local government's already developed. It's working with some of the providers who are out there, um, some of the community groups that are out there, and not reinventing the wheel. The last thing we want to do is to invent two systems, a health system and a social care system, when we're actually talking about people who um, have health and social care needs but just basically want to get on and live their life. When you focus down on an individual or a family and you put resource around them, and that, whether that be health and social, health and social care resource, and you create a budget, um, you've got a much better chance of making a difference. So integration that tries to work at a structural level or around um, uh, teams and um, organisational issues gets lost because there are so many vested interests at play. When you try and integrate around an individual, actually you've got a massive opportunity to make a difference.